4, breaking news. This is WYFF News 4 at 6 in high definition. Oh, what fun. Yes, it's November 18th, and some of us had ice on the windshield this morning. We're talking Arctic cold here weeks away from winter. Oh, that sound, huh? Yeah. Take a look at John's map here. 49 of the 50 states in the United States were below freezing this morning. Half of the country is covered in ice from New York, St. Louis, Kentucky, Montana. All the same story, and here he is, Chief Meteorologist John Sesser is joining us right now. John, we're in for another deep freeze tonight, right? Yeah, Michael and Carol, we're going to be very close to record low temperatures, I think, for tonight across the entire area. And as this Arctic air continues to move slowly across the area, all the way down to the Gulf Coast, look at this. Highs are only in the 40s to around, or low 50s in New Orleans today and only warmed up to around low 50s even in Orlando. Look how cold it is across the area. How about our current temperatures? 18 right now in Boom. This is not wind chills, actual temperatures outside. 25 in Asheville. It's already at the freezing mark in Spartanburg. 36 in Greenville. 34 degrees in Anderson. By the way, officially we reached 40 degrees barely at the GS Pronounced Airport this afternoon. That's the coldest high temperature ever recorded on this date. 30 for the high at the Asheville Regional Airport this afternoon. Also, the coldest high temperature ever recorded. On this date, we could be talking about record low temperatures when you wake up tomorrow morning. I'll show you those numbers a little bit later on. Now back to you, Carol. Thank you, John. The ice was a problem this morning. This is the type of ice we're talking about. This is on Spartanburg Highway in Hendersonville. And ice caused a lot of trouble on I 85 this morning in Spartanburg County. Yeah, two accidents within in just minutes of each other caused a traffic mess that lasted for hours. WIFF News Force Ali Miles was there. It almost always happens in a flash. In this case, an SUV on I-85 skids on some ice and crashes. Next, a semi-driver goes too far, trying to avoid the SUV, tipping its back half in the process. Just hope this is not indicative of what we can expect this winter. Um, it's getting a little bit cold, seeing a little bit of ice earlier than what we're used to. Luckily, the folks in these vehicles walked away unscathed. But check out this video from Sky 4. The wrecks backed up traffic for hours. Folks late to work all because of a little patch of black ice. And it only takes one accident to make a very difficult commute for thousands on their roads. This ramp had to be shut down after this morning's accidents in order to help with the flow of traffic. You know, heed those uh, warnings. You need to think about that when you're going. And if you know areas that are, are more prone to that, uh, then you need to be a little bit more careful in those areas. That black ice isn't exactly rare. A storm here and there, always a reminder to stay safe and slow. But these drivers say not everyone shares the road. A lot of people go fast. Some people are used to it down south, and then some people aren't. Just have to be careful. And then, you know, ice, construction, just a bad place to be. I avoid it at all costs. And when this weather is unavoidable, some drivers have an entirely different solution altogether. I'm ready to go south. As soon as it gets cold, I'm ready to go. We are in the south. Uh, not far enough south. <laughs> Allie Miles, WYFF News 4 in Spartanburg County. Those weren't the only wrecks this morning. One in Henderson County involved a bus carrying 20 students. Highway Patrol says this wreck was not weather related. They say the bus stopped on Asheville Highway near, near Fair and Villa Drive. Troopers say Shell Whaling crashed her Nissan into the back of the bus. She was pinned under the bus for about an hour. Once freed, Whalen was flown to Mission Hospital. We just knew we had a job in front of us to do. Uh, it's, you know, the car was pretty well damaged, but everything went like clockwork, like it normally does. None of the students on the bus was hurt. Right now, no word on Whalen's condition. But Captain Lanning did say she was speaking with them the whole time they were working with her. Check out this image from Buncombe County. The Asheville City Schools tweeted this out this morning. Kind of looks like January, doesn't it? This is an area near Vance Elementary School. The roads there in western North Carolina put the schools in Buncombe County on a two hour delay, but many of the surrounding districts, districts simply said no school at all today. To help you keep up with these closings, we, of course, will continue to run a crawl at the bottom of your screen in the mornings. And uh, speaking of tomorrow morning, yes, Madison, Mitchell, and Yancey counties all on a two hour delay there in western North Carolina. Again, keep it here on WYFF News 4 and WYFF4.com. We'll keep you up to date on the closings and delays. Many of you turned up your heaters trying to keep your home warm this cold weather. Duke Energy says there is a spike in energy consumption. Here's some need to know on staying warm and saving energy. Duke Energy says to make sure to change your air filters in your home. Also try turning on fans to circulate the warm air. Dressing in layers even when your home can help.
If you really want to make an impact on your winter energy bill, is go to the thermostat. If you can handle cutting it down a couple of degrees when you leave for the morning for work and school, and when you come back, cut it up to a more comfortable level, that makes a huge difference. We also want to remind you about Share the Warmth. Duke's employees, customers, and shareholders will provide the money used to help customers who struggle to pay winter energy bills. Duke says customers will find information about the program in their bills this month. Last year, Share the Warmth helped more than 23,000 customers across the Carolinas. And don't forget, if you're taking pictures of the snow we'd like to see, just upload them to you local on WIFF4.com. We are continuing to cover breaking news from 5 o'clock. Two bodies were found in a home in Cowpens after a welfare check this morning, this afternoon. Sky 4 was soon over the area. WIFF News Force Liz Loheis is live and local. Liz, what more can you tell us tonight? Michael and Carol, I can tell you that the community is not in any danger right now. Investigators say they are not looking for any suspects at this time. I am live here on the scene outside the home. Most, most of the investigators have left. There is still one deputy on scene. The coroner is doing exams on the bodies right now. He tells me uh, once he completes that and talks with family members, he will give us more information. Um, we don't know at this time the ages or the genders of the two people inside or how they died. Again, we do expect to have more information very shortly. You can stick with WIFF4.com for the very latest on this story. Liz Lohheist, WIFF News 4, live in Cowpens. Thank you, Liz. A condition update now and a deadly wreck in Anderson that claimed three lives and hospitalized three others. The wreck was on November 8th. Investigators say Riley McDermott crashed into a car on Boulevard Street. He is charged with six counts of DUI. 20-year-old Jessica Roberts, 17-year-old Amber Perkins, and 22-year-old Corey Simmons all died in the wreck. Amber's sister Cheyenne Queen is still in critical condition. Jessica's sister Samantha Roberts is listed in good condition, and Brian Hatcher, who was in the vehicle with McDermott, is now in serious condition. The Anderson County Sheriff's Office says it arrested three people. They are charged in a deadly shootout that happened in Anderson. Javaris Hill, Chadwick Hill, and Cameron Brown are all charged with obstruction of justice. Investigators say early Martin was shot during a robbery attempt at Hill's home on Winston Drive. They say after the shooting, Brown and the Hill brothers tried to remove all evidence of the shootout. They never reported the shooting. The sheriff's office says Martin's death was ruled as a justifiable homicide. Javara Hill is also being held on two unrelated attempted murder charges. Tonight, the Environmental Protection Agency says it's okay for people in a Skyland community to go back home. The agency ordered them to evacuate because toxic vapors were coming from the old CTS factory site. The EPA says it found unsafe levels of trichloroethylene inside three homes there. It's a toxic chemical known to cause cancer, an industrial solvent. The EPA says it used a vacuum-like device to suck the solvents in a nearby spring and uh, in the homes are now safe. The community says the community has been fighting for years to get the EPA to clean up that CTS site.